Hello and welcome back to Craftopia. This week, our favorite Discord server's bake-along recipe theme is Baked Alaska. My version is vegan and gluten-free. Before you do anything, you need to prepare your ice cream. So just freeze a saran wrap bowl of ice cream. Now we move on to the meringue. It's made from aquafaba, which is the liquid found in a can of chickpeas. This stuff is absolute magic. This video is more about making this than anything else because you can apply it to anything. I found that one 14 ounce can of chickpeas gave me a little under 200 mils and you actually want to start with 300 mils. So I opened a second jar. People call this stuff liquid gold because you can do so many egg white type things with it. Like I thought it was going to taste like chickpeas but it actually doesn't taste anything at all like chickpeas once you're done, you know, doing all the magic stuff that you do to it. However, you do need to reduce it. So we're just going to let it reduce for about 15 minutes. In the meantime, make your brownie or you can make a cake base. It really doesn't matter. I will include the link to my brownie recipe in the description. It does not matter what your base is. It just needs to be something solid to hold on to the ice cream. Um, I used brownie, obviously. My reduced aquafaba was less than the 150 mils I was going for, but I made it work. It's fine. So back to your base. You're going to want to take a bowl the same size as the one your ice cream is in and just kind of put that over top as a cookie cutter shape to make sure that your base is the same size as your ice cream. Uh, just because you can't have any gaps, you want to make sure that it's exactly the same size. It really doesn't matter if it's cake or brownie though, it just needs to be some type of base. And then just cut away your excess. You can eat it or make it into a trifle or make cake pops if it's a cake or a brownie pops or whatever it doesn't matter from here we go back to the aquafaba now it's in the mixer and we add cream of tartar and then let it mix and just let this mix for 10 minutes look how magical this is that was literally only 10 minutes this stuff is wild and we're not even done yet so to make it even better we're going to add some water and sugar quite a bit of sugar actually and mix this up don't mix this too much just mix so that the sugar is incorporated. And now we're gonna add in our agar. I never know if I'm pronouncing that right, but we add that in. Mix that too. Again, don't over mix. Just make sure that it is fully incorporated. Here it's not fully, like I kept mixing after this. And then you're gonna just don't over mix. It's very important to stop mixing once that's incorporated. We want this to heat up to about 240 degrees. Then, and this is incredible, this is the aquafaba without the agar mixture. Like it's already so nice and stiff. But we want it to hit that nice soft peak point. So we're just very, very slowly adding in that agar and sugar mixture on the left side there. Really, really slowly. It feels like it takes forever, but it's totally worth it. Just let that whip and then you can crank up your mixer towards the end and let it mix even further. Just look at this stuff. I feel like it's actually more like like that marshmallow fluff than it is like meringue, but it's amazing. It behaves like meringue, but kind of looks and tastes like marshmallow fluff. So now we're just gonna prepare the actual baked Alaska. So you put down your base, whatever that is. Now we get our ice cream out. It was already frozen, obviously, but now it's frozen in the shape that we want it to be frozen in. And wouldn't you know, it's too small for, or I should say maybe my base is too big. So I had to do a little bit of minor surgery to cut away some of that to make sure that it was the same size because we can't have any gaps or else the ice cream is gonna melt in the oven. So there's my meringue. It's absolutely incredible. I still can hardly believe it came from aquafaba as well. Now we're just gonna to get to spackling. You do not want any gaps at all. So when it come down to the side here, you wanna make sure that it goes all the way from the top to the bottom and all the way down to the parchment paper with absolutely no gaps at all. Because there's any gaps, or ice cream's gonna melt. So I'm just kind of doing a check here, thinking that I've got it perfect and then boom, I spot a hole. So just make sure that you have patched up any holes that you might find. Spin around a couple times just to be sure. And now we're gonna do, you know, the little spiky things all over it to make it look really legit. And also because these are the parts, of course, that, that pick up that nice color. So just make as many of those as is practical. And then into the oven. Mine was actually too close to the broiler. That's how close it was, that's too close. Because as you can see here, the top caught rest of it didn't. So I had to rearrange my shelves in the oven to make that make sense. Now it's much further down and then it properly was able to brown kind of all the way around. Top is still a little burnt marshmallow but it was fine. It was actually perfect. So 
Then I transfer to a cutting board. Here we have the moment of truth and I cut it open expecting to perhaps find some melted ice cream and I did not. I was actually super nervous for this reveal because I didn't want to puddle, but I also didn't want undercooked meringue on top and I was kind of nervous about that. So naturally I put it on one of my granny's dessert plates because she's always with me when I do these weird kitchen experiments and it worked and I couldn't possibly be more pleased. So let us know in the comments if you try this recipe and join the Discord server for these bake-alongs. Remember to subscribe and follow along on Instagram.